All right, uh, Netflix uh, catching everyone's eye. Uh, earnings after the bell, and you know the drill here where they look at that and a lot of other developments, uh, but particularly the subscribers, how many new ones they got. I think they're looking for a little bit better than 5 million additional uh, subscribers, and that will kind of sort of be the theme going forward. A market watcher, David Manson, and Fox Business and Susan Lee. Susan, uh, yeah. that's one of those weird cases, right, where it's beyond earnings or revenue. It's all about people hooking up with you, right? <laughs> it definitely is. Hooking up with you, that's a good term. That's yeah, the way so, I go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're looking for 6 million subscribers, 6.2 million new subscribers, 5 million of those expected outside of the U.S. And, yes, that's all that matters because for the fat past four quarters, Netflix has actually missed EPS targets. But it's all about how many people are actually paying to stream. So most of these should be outside the U.S. And for the first time ever, it looks like revenue for Netflix, 50 percent, more than 50 percent will come from outside of the U.S. So to me, that says expansion opportunity. And uh, we still have 40 out of 44 analysts saying bye. Um, what do you make of this stock period, uh, Dave, when you look at it? It's been a phenomenon, obviously, uh, in a camp of other high tech names that have similarly gotten a positive response. But it's certainly a volatile ride. Well, I mean, it actually more lately has not been very volatile to the downside. It hasn't really been choppy. It's just been almost straight line up, which uh, from our vantage point as contrarian and value oriented people makes us even more skeptical. But I mean, the bottom really? line, Neil, is that if you believe the multiple is going to keep expanding, then you can keep buying the stock. I don't think it's about. So even if it's 10 percent or so off of its high. Um, you're, you're quite right to say oh. it, it's, it's soaring uh, like no one's business. But but that that craziness doesn't dissuade you. It's this other stuff. Right. And 10 and percent off a high for a stock that's trading at 380 times earnings is immaterial. I mean, the multiple is such that no one can say, well, it's expensive, but it's growing. The multiple is capturing all the growth and then some for the remainder of a long, long period of time. I don't want to say my life because I'm hoping to live several more decades. <laughs> so you get the idea. <clears throat> but, Susan, but no, what, what the, you're, you're betting on continued multiple expansion. Yeah. And from a risk reward standpoint, it's so far out of bounds of what we would do. I lack the words to articulate. Wow. wow. That's a big event right there. Um, so, Susan, looking at technology, of course, it's been a market leader in general. I'm talking about technology yeah. stocks, and we're rifling through some of them here. Um, what do you hear from folks on, on that whole play? Because every time you, you want to get out of them, yeah. investors have been punished for, 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 you know, getting out on a dip or a slip. Well, look what happened at the beginning of this year, right? When we had that 1,000 point decline, people were selling out of technology. And since then, that's when Netflix actually bounced from those uh, first quarter numbers because everyone's saying, oh, Netflix, can they do it again? Can they beat the numbers? And they do. They have for the past four quarters. So I don't think you can count out a stock like Netflix and uh, a lot of money still rotating into these technology names because let's, let's say it. I mean, for this year, it's really been the top five, the big five, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, and, uh, Google and Microsoft has been getting all the money. David, you know, there are a lot of people invested in NASDAQ 100, what have you, or technology is just an ongoing play. Stick with that as a theme going forward. What do you tell them? Well, I, I think that the argument, whenever the, the leading argument for ownership of stocks or a certain sector, in this case, it's kind of like its own mini sector, this little group of four or five names that arguably have been the leadership space in the market. But when the argument for owning it is that more and more people are buying it, that is called greater fool theory. It's a game of mu musical chairs. Historically, it does not end well. I'm not timing anything. I'm not saying sell today. I think these are incredible companies. But from a risk reward standpoint, they are so expensive and they are priced for such perfection. And as she said, they're based on other people buying it to drive the stock price higher. I just think there is such better value available in the market. And I'm, I'm talking about Netflix, but I'm talking about some of the other FANG names, too. And if I have time, real quickly, the one point I make about that earlier drop in the year, 
Netflix is not really in this part of the technology space, but the political pressures that we think are coming around privacy-related issues, around monopolies, that has not, to me, been fully priced in yet and will take a long time to play out. But I, I think this transition of Silicon Valley now being demonized by the left, the way that Wall Street and big oil have already been demonized in decades past, I think that's a big uh, impact long term mm. on the multiples for these stocks. Guys, thank you both very, very much. Good catching up with you. Thank you.